righty, all righty. Welcome everybody to the CNC with Dave Gatton show. Tonight I have my special guest, Grant Davis. Or should I say Grant Buckeye Davis? <laughs> I wore my special hat just for you. I knew you would. I knew you would. <laughs> Mine's right over there. I should have put I should have put mine on. But, uh, we'll uh we'll uh we'll let you shine with the buckeyes there tonight. But uh but anyway, welcome, Matt. I, I'm glad you were able to join me tonight. I've been trying to get you to come on here for a little while, and I know you're a busy fella. You probably put more uh, air miles, uh, you know, than anybody I know. Um, I don't know how you do it, but uh, I got one quick little announcement I want to talk about before uh, we get started talking with Grant. And that is, I've gotten a few emails lately, and I and I usually get some every so often. Uh, you know, people from the UK or you know Europe or Australia or different places want to get in CNC kit, and I've only shipped them to the U.S. and Canada, and that's still true. But I have added a link to the website on there. Um, I've researched and found a company where you can sign up with this company and get you a, a USA physical address. And what they do is they're just a, a package forwarder is what they are. And they're a company that does mail forwarding, package forwarding. And you could sign up and get an account. And, you know, when you get the Gat and CNC kit, there's a lot of other companies uh, that may or may not ship internationally. I know McMaster doesn't, and there's a lot of stuff that I call out in the specs from McMaster. So you can get the whole thing, have it shipped to that physical address, which it's actually in Houston. And they let you know, you can check your the website or however they do it. I'm not sure how they do it, but, uh, you know, you could get, they'll package all that up and send it to you. Um, so that makes everybody happy. You can still get a GAT and CNC kit, and I'm still shipping only in the U.S. But uh, thought I'd throw that out there, let everybody know that that's on the website. Um, so there you go. Taking, All right. over shops, take, taking over shops, one GAT and CNC at a time. Yeah, we're we're, we're working on it. We're working on it. Uh, it's a little slow on that world domination thing, but. We're getting there. We're getting there. Got one uh, interesting comment already. <laughs> <laughs> I just saw that. You knew that was coming. What have you expected? Yeah. Nothing less. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Grant, uh, if you would, sir, tell us a little bit or tell the folks. I already know a little bit about you. Grant, you came down here. Uh, I don't remember when that was. That's been a pretty good while now. What was it? Last it's, sometime? It's probably been a little over a year ago. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, but you stopped by here. So you, you've been here. I've met you in person and stuff. Uh, but for all the people who uh, haven't met you at the, the woodworking shows or whatever, just fill them in. Give them a little bit about yourself. Um, just tell them whatever you want them to know. Um, Grant Davis. I live in uh, Westerville, Ohio. I'm a uh, traveling man, as Dave would say. I'm a field service engineer for a company that manufactures uh, insulated metal panels. And we have five production facilities in North America, and there's only two of us that cover the field service portion of it. So I could be, well, this week I was in Connecticut at ESPN, started the week on Monday and spent the rest of the week in uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. So uh, if there's any guys out there that looking for a shop visit or want to get together and have a cold beverage and set and talk shop, I'll be uh, letting you know if you follow me on Facebook or anything where I'm going to be. And actually, I'm going back to Tulsa on Monday and hope to get to see Dell Ludlam. Uh, who lives about 20 minutes from where I was at last week. Didn't find that out until the day before I was getting ready to leave and didn't have much time to uh, to get with him. But uh, 
I don't get much shop time through the week. I leave on Mondays, get home on Fridays, but uh, I optimize my time when I can on Saturdays and Sundays. My wife's very understanding and uh, she knows it makes me happy and refuels my tanks and keeps me going when I can get out there and cut some stuff. Yeah. Excellent. We had a, another interesting comment here. You know, I got to show this one. Mark Lindsay CNC says, Grant also holds the record for taking the longest to assemble a garage work CNC kit. Um, now let's talk about that for a minute, Grant. Okay. <laughs> uh, I have, you know, I have records of anything any, anybody's ever bought from me. So I did a little research earlier today and it looks like you purchased your first garage works uh in march of 2017 so coming up on three years uh so i believe mr Lindsay's probably right that's uh the current record uh and from what i understand when we talked earlier that record keeps getting longer every day because that one's still in the crates is that, that correct one that is correct. That one, the 48 by 48 is still in the crate. Um, once I got to looking at it after I got it, I was very intimidated and uh, I went back and I looked at the 18 by 24 that I currently have together in the shop. And uh, I started with that one and I've made a promise to myself that uh, the 48 by 48 will be together by the 1st of May my birthday this year so uh okay well i'm glad you're announcing that here publicly <laughs> you're gonna hold my feet to the fire. Down, may 1st yep <laughs> but uh but yeah i was gonna say you because i was surprised when i got the order from you and i know the date on it too uh february 2018 is when you bought the the smaller one and i know when i when i saw that i'm like i wonder if grant's buying that for you know son-in-law or somebody like that. Cause I, I couldn't figure out why you were buying it. And then sure enough, you, you know, a few months later you had that one together, but, mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I think that's, uh, it's kind of interesting and I'm glad you're sticking to it. You, you know, there's no, um, you know, it's not a race. It doesn't matter how long it takes. It, it's, it, uh, it comes up in conversation every once in a while, and <laughs> some threads and, uh, I get private message every once in a while from some guys that are local that want to buy it. And it's, I'm not willing to sell it because I'm going to put it together and I'm going to put it to good yeah. use. Yeah. So. Well, see, the good thing is it's, it's basically exactly like the one you're running. Mm -hmm. It's only bigger. Exactly. You know, that's the only difference. So now you're really familiar with the, the smaller one and I got to tell you folks, this guy for somebody who only gets a little shop time on the weekends, he is killing it with some of these projects. And I rated his uh, Facebook page, which we want to tell the folks about that too, uh, and got a bunch of pictures. So I'm going to show you a bunch of pictures of stuff that uh, Grant has done with his limited shop time. Uh, but before I get to the pictures, Grant, you want to say a little something about your um, Facebook page? A lot of people may not even know that you have it. So there's yeah. a link down below in the description uh, for those of you who want to go over there and, and give it a like on Facebook. My, uh, my Facebook page is Dragonfly CNC. Um, I don't currently have a web page. Um, I don't have Twitter. I don't have uh, Instagram, but uh, Dragonfly CNC on Facebook and come on over, check it out. Okay. Well, I want to go ahead and, uh, well, I should have already been screen shared here and had this ready, but I'm going to go ahead and get these uh, pictures queued up so everybody can see some of this awesome work. Uh, that you're doing here. Yeah, I should have already had this done. But anyway, we'll do it like this. Okay. 
This is the first picture I uh, grabbed off your Facebook page. And I just want to let folks see that, you know, as you, as y'all have heard me say many times, bigger is not necessarily bigger or better, uh, at least in the CNC world. Uh, this is the smallest of the garage work CNC machines that I made. And Grant is doing some awesome work with this thing, as you're going to see here in just a little bit. But uh, tell everybody a little bit about your setup here, uh, Grant. Um, it's got the, I put drag chain in uh, on the X and Y. Um, it's just a regular piece of three quarter inch birch plywood table. And I've got MDF slats with a table between the T-Tracks, uh, pieces in between the T-Tracks to uh, use as hold down clamps. The top pieces are replaceable um, as a sacrificial table. And uh, running a DeWalt DWP 611 with a Kent CNC dust shoe and uh, absolutely love this little thing. So. And is that just a, uh, you run into the dust collection with a shop vac? Is that yes. what you're doing? Currently, I've got just a small shop vac on it, but I've since uh, picked up a uh, one of the smaller Rockler uh, wall hanging dust collectors that I'm going to dedicate uh, to both the CNCs. Um, my shop's only 18 by 19. It was uh, when I bought the house. It's actually the back half of a four car garage that the guy had a weld shop in, had plenty of power. The walls were uh, OSB, no insulation or drywall in the ceiling. And so it was one of the things I did, had it done and had the walls painted white. And just got to do some rearranging and get things set up the way I want it. And uh, my table that it's on, it's on casters. It's a uh, Craig. Um, piece together table it's got a maple slab top that uh, I got it off of Craigslist also so I'm a Craigslist and marketplace junkie and there's nothing wrong with that. yeah, yeah. so uh, it's nice and nice and easy to roll around and it serves its purpose for right now yeah um, <clears throat> I was gonna say to you that you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do hold down, but that you've got my favorite setup right there with, you know, having plywood as the base where you can screw the T-track down. The plywood gives the screw something to bite into. Mm -hmm. And then the MDF that can be replaceable like that. That's my favorite uh, kind of a spoil board setup that I like. The T-track I bought from, uh, I think was a, um, Orange aluminum. I got the pieces. Yeah, that's that's Cut probably the, one of the best places I've seen to get it. Yep. Uh, Cut them to length, and uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier with it. So I just gotta. Yeah, I also want to give a shout out to my Johnny on the spot moderator out there, Hobby. He's uh, always uh, right on it here. He's putting the uh, Grant's Facebook page link right in the chat here. So thank you for that, Javi. And like thank I said, you. folks, it's also, uh, if you're watching this after the fact, it's also in the show description right at the top. So uh, it'll say Grant's uh, Facebook page or something to that effect. So anyway, you can uh, go check it out. All right. So Grant, I'm going to just, while I've got this picture up, I'm going to just hit the little arrow here and flip through. I think I've got about 20 something pictures here. Uh, and if you would just, as I get to one, say a little bit about it, if you can remember what you did, uh, cause I didn't get all the, the captions and stuff. I just got the pictures, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll start right here with this one. Um, just a piece of birch plywood. Uh, I got it from a friend and my boss is a big time Cowboys fan. And, uh, he's actually ordered three of these. I've got two of them cut. Got to get them painted. Uh, so it's about 14, 14 inches wide and uh, 
probably about nine inches tall. It's uh, the lettering was cut with a. Uh, I use a lot of one thirty second uh, end mills, mm -hmm. and the rest of it was cut with a sixteenth end mill and then a quarter inch end mill to uh, profile the outside. All right. Yeah, I really like. I mean, I realize it's not painted yet, but I really, mm -hmm. uh, really like that. As I'm sure most Cowboys fans would. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure he'll, he's going to like it. Yeah. All right. Let me uh, move on to the next one. And also, I wanted to ask, I'm assuming as I was saving all these pictures off of your thing, I'm assuming that all of these are within the physical limits of your machine. You haven't had to do tiling on any of these? Absolutely. Um, everything has been... Uh, undersized from the table size and I haven't got into the tiling yet. I we'll talk about later. I've got some designs of stuff that I've been working on that I want to try, but uh, just haven't cut yet. Yeah. Yeah. Now this one's uh, particularly one I like because uh, having some labs here. Yeah. Um, in fact, one of them was just in here a minute ago. I don't know where he went, but yeah. Stinky. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah, that, I really like that one. Old uh, high school classmate wanted it for her daughter. Her daughter was a cheerleader at the University of Cincinnati, and she's got uh, actually four black labs, and uh, that's what she calls them, her cheerleading squad. And uh, I made that for her for Christmas. So. Yeah, I think we got a question. If I catch it real quick and we'll go back. Troy wants to know why Michigan half of it was milled off. And it's because there's uh, it's because of the line of the star or of the, the lines of the, yeah, the, the stripes. Flag. Yeah. Still got the outline, but the, yeah, yeah, half of it is milled off. Yeah. Okay. Now what is your, um, because I know some people will want to know this. What is your process for making one of these? If you can just kind of walk us through that. Uh, this this, and most of my stuff is uh, just milled as uh, dry with no finish on it. Um, then I rattle can or spray shellac, hand paint, and uh, re-sand the overspray or the paint that's brushed on. And then rattle can shellac again. I've uh, I bought a. I'm notorious for this. I bought a, some stuff and don't use it right away. But I got an airbrush last summer and uh, haven't taken it out of the box yet. So that's that, again, that's another thing that I plan on getting out and getting to use. And hopefully, it'll uh, speed up my process a little bit. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I was just uh, wanting to ask about your process of doing this. Cause, and that's very similar to the way I do stuff like this. But I, I really, uh, I mean, all the lines are nice and clear. The way the paint is really, uh, really a nice job there. I use a, um, I have a 45 degree angle Milwaukee drill that I have a flap sander disc in. And that's what I usually used to clean out the the cuttings and I have a exacto knife if you know if there's something that's left in the bottom of the cut or mm -hmm. anything so was a 16th end mill on the paws and the dog and I think a 60 degree v bit on the uh, text mm -hmm. yeah I really like that and what kind of wood is that is that is that just just box store oak Oh, okay. Okay. Yep. Box store oak. All righty. Let's move on to the next one because I got a lot of these to show here, and I'll try to remember to uh, enlarge each one of these as I go. That's uh, was the same thing. Was for the same customer, one of her coworkers. Um, match, not perfectly, but sometimes it's the view outside of their camper from their web server from their campsite, and. Uh, Trees, mountains, and stream. All right. Same cool. thing. I like that. All right. Okay. Now, this one, I, I got this picture on purpose to show um, 
because that's why I was asking you about your technique. You can see that you hand painted this and then you come back and that's what it looks like cleaned up. Yes. So. That's so I'm, it. When I'm painting, I, I look like a tattoo artist. I got a paper towel wrapped around my fingers and my left hand. I'm painting with my right and a damp paper towel uh, just to wipe off the overage of the paint and uh, mm -hmm. then go back and let it dry usually 12 to 24 hours and get a five and a half inch random orbit sander that I take the stuff off with and then respray them. Yeah. yeah. I, I don't like painting because I'm terrible at it, but I do just like you do. I, I take a, a little small brush and some of the hobby store acrylic paint and try to do it and try not to get it. But mine usually, Mine usually end up looking way worse than this <laughs> when I when I start, but yeah. Uh, but yeah, an overall sander can do wonders uh, mm -hmm. on stuff like that. So, all righty, here's another neat one. Yeah, it was. Uh, I was looking for the 3D file to uh, try some of these. I I do have the 3D file now, but haven't had a chance to cut any more. This was just a profile of uh, a onesie and added text all done the same technique mm -hmm. I really like this and I was telling Grant before we uh, before we went live a while ago that uh, as I was getting these pictures uh, you know I was seeing things that was giving me a lot of ideas on on projects to make this was one of them because I know that baby stuff and wedding stuff always sell real good at you know and pet stuff that's the other one pet stuff yes. uh, so those three things always seem to sell really well so that's kind of cool I like that All right, this one, I don't know how good we can see it. Let's see if I can enlarge it a little bit here. It's my uh, nephew with the cowboy hat on. It's just their local uh, Gunfighters Motorcycle Club in Houston. And uh, those are the original four members. And he uh, contacted me, wanted to know if I could make those for, for them, for their two-year anniversary and same technique everything everything all done the same and is that the uh i think i'm do i have a big picture of that or not no i guess i don't was that the uh skyline of houston yes yeah it's just uh, that was just a um black and white jpeg that i got and traced and then added the text and so Okay, let's see. I'm trying to keep it on the chat here, too. We got a question from uh, Stephen Toronto. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Um, it says, are these your own designs or your interpretation of what a customer says they want, or do you give, or do they give you a drawing, etc.? cetera? Um, That's a good question, Stephen. I've, I've never worked off of someone else's drawing. It's mainly just a verbal description. Um, and then I go looking for an image or something that I think might fit the, the description that they want. And then I put it together and send it off for uh, approval before I cut it. Okay. I was going to ask you if you uh, use the, the uh, what do they call it, where you take a preview JPEG of the yeah the simulation on, on Vectric and you can send it to the customer and they can get a pretty good idea of what it's going to look like. Yep. All right. Let's move on back to that one I had a while ago. This is kind of a neat one. So I got into the habit of, uh, I've been making these for their desk plaques for my coworkers. This one was for the, uh, safety administrator at work that he has on his desk. I've done them for, quality shipping uh, so just you know it was a, a jpeg i found in a google search and cut it painted it they, these guys love these at work so 
I've got about 12 more of them to make for all the office. And uh, the president of our company, who's based out of Florida, was in the office a while back. And uh, he actually loved them and came back and started talking to me about them. He's contemplating having me make them for all the employees, which there's, I'm going to say over 500 in the U.S., so <laughs> could get time consuming. Yeah, you, you may have to hurry up and put that other CNC together. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I might be tiling them and then cutting them to length that way, so it's hard to tell. All right, let's, uh, okay, here's a, another one. Somebody here is a Steelers fan and uh, what is that, Jaguars? Penn State. Penn State. Oh, Penn State, okay. Yeah. That, see, that's just it. Um, the, the people at work, they know they're going to get them um, eventually, but just through general conversation with them, they don't know what I'm going to put on the as the image. So I you know, pick their brains and then I go looking for something, and it's always a surprise for them. They know it's going to have their name and something on it, but they don't know what. So. Yeah, I apologize for my dogs barking. Apparently, my neighbor stepped outside or something. Who knows what? <laughs> they go crazy. Uh, so I had to mute my mic for a second, tell them to shut up. So, all right, um, let's move on to the next one here. All right, let me, uh, not to uh, cut the gal's head off, but I wanted to get where we can see this good. This is actually this that same uh, black lab image that I had on the other one. Um, this lady had her dog for what over fourteen years and or thirteen years, and uh, this was a guy that I didn't know him very well, but uh, we'd become friends on a job site in Wisconsin, and we still occasionally talk. And I get back and see him every once in a while, and he sent me a message on Facebook and wanted to surprise his wife with this for Christmas. So uh, put it together. And this one, just a, a different type of process. It was stained first and then cut, uh, relief cut. It's just a select pine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Turned out really good. I like yeah. it. She absolutely loved it. So that was, you know, that's, that's the end goal. Yeah. I was just looking at the uh, the dates on there. That uh, gets me thinking because Rocky was he, he's born in two thousand six, so but he's still uh, plugging along. So, all right, now what in the heck is this big old O on here for? What does that mean? <laughs> right there, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. It, I know some people get upset. These are, I'm not selling these. These were all gifts. Um, the ones that have proprietary stuff on. So uh, I just don't get myself in trouble with copyrights, but uh, yeah, something to do. Yeah. I like that. It's got the, uh, the red or, or is it red or crimson? It, it's the, uh, it's scarlet. Yeah. Scarlet. Okay. Yeah. So it's, uh, but I like the gray around that too on the inside and outside of that. that look, that's a nice touch right there. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Okay. Let's see if I can get a little bigger on these. Okay. Now I think from the, your page, these are for some kids. Yep. Um, one of my wife's co-workers um there are three kids one like and a, one's a huge batman fan obviously violet a little girl and then luke the other one and then uh, i did the the names in their favorite colors and so yeah i like that and i'm sure they did too from the looks of the smile oh, yeah. i saw on their faces All right. Now this is an interesting one. Tell us about this one. Um, my nephew is the uh, president of the local National Wild Turkey Federation, 
and their vice president, um, Keith, had gotten cancer. And they've started having this youth tur turkey hunt in the fall. And, uh, this was uh, just a donation plaque for them to give to the, I think the age range is up to 14 uh, for these kids that go out with experienced hunters. And this was given to them for the biggest bird. And uh, at the county symbol down in, that's the county I grew up in, in Ohio, in southeastern Ohio. And then the, put the image images together and cut it out. Yeah, I really like that. Uh, that I, I just like that one. Very cool. The little girl just absolutely loved it. She, you know, obviously they didn't tell anybody they was giving it out or anything, but uh, this was her first year of hunting and she was really pleased with it. Mm-hmm. All right, let me see if I can get this one a little bigger. And I take it this one's for a wedding? Or... This was actually my daughter and son-in-law. Oh, okay, cool. So, uh, yep. That was I was just... going to say stuff like this really sells, but I guess you wasn't going to charge your son-in-law. No, nah, no. Nah. <laughs> this was, uh, m my daughter done things a little bit different. She, uh, She's she was in South Carolina going to school and they got married justice of the peace and didn't have any family members there with them or anything. So this was just a preview image that uh, that I had sent to her and and uh, told her I was going to be cutting it for him. So. All righty. Very, very good. This one's pretty cool. Looks like on a just piece of a slab here. Yeah, it's a uh, natural edge red elm. Um, just another one of the split letter texts. And it, these are sometimes challenging to find the center <laughs> and, uh, and make it look good. I've done several of these and uh, they're, they can be a challenge to make sure they're centered and you can get them to hang the right way after they're done. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think you did an excellent job on that one. I see, uh, I'm trying to, again, I'm trying to keep an eye on the chat and look at these pictures too. Mark had a question here about the font, and I think he may have been talking about, is it this one, the one you were talking about, Mark? The font. I'm guessing that's it from the. Um, you know what, Mark? I don't know off the top of my head, but I can, I'll look at it. And, uh, I think it was a pack of fonts that I bought off of, oh gosh, there's so dang many of the font things, but I'll look back through my things and find the split letter text. I'm not sure which one it was. Okay. Yeah. He was asking about, uh, here it is. I was waiting for it to pop up the initial K on the wedding sign. Yeah. So that's the one he was asking about. Uh, let's see here. Okay, we've seen that one. Okay, here's another cool one. Yeah. Um, again, another another guy that I work with in Canada. You know, proud Union sheet metal worker, and uh, something I put together for him and. Now, is this blank glued up? No, um, it was bought that way. It's um, oh, okay. actually a, a stair runner. Oh, okay. Okay. So, I was going to say, it looks like you've maybe taken some smaller pieces and did a glue up on it. No, I, I bought, actually just bought it that way. Yeah. I like that, man. You get, you're getting the, the technique down really well because this, all these things have nice crisp lines on them. I really like that. That's one thing I've uh, <laughs> I've learned to note at it quite well. I mean, it's time consuming, but it makes uh, makes for nice clean cuts. Right, right. You clean stuff up. All right now we're getting to uh, a couple of them that I really like. Um, I 
I did three of these. My wife's uh, president of a local rotary here in town and uh, their annual golf outing. She asked me to come up with something and the golf ball itself with the dimples was just a 3D image that I uh, captured, traced, and then went in and added the text to. Um, it's a the disc itself uh, that it's cut on. Um, I think I bought a pack of five of them for like eight bucks off of Amazon, and uh, it's six and six and a quarter, six and a half inches diameter. Nothing real huge, but uh, the people absolutely loved them when they want them. So. Yeah, well, that's a good size for a, a, a plaque like this, something mm -hmm. they put on their desk uh, or, or hanging behind their desk or whatever. That, uh, I like that. Okay, so there's the, the closest to the pin, and we've got the longest putt. Uh, that's uh i really i really like these and then we've got the longest drive so uh well done on these grant i really like Thanks. these and next we've got a couple of more here this was something i made for my mother um the actual the top one is just an image trace that I found on a Google search. And then I matched the text for the great and the grander on the lower one and uh, went in and adjusted it. And it's bird's eye maple. The bird's eye really stood out on these. Uh, it, they turned out absolutely wonderful. And she was over the moon with them. Oh bet. yeah, yeah, these look great. All right, moving on. Let's see. I'm we're getting near the end here, I think, from the ones I got. Let me try to make this a little bigger for our viewers. Uh just a somebody asked me they wanted a plaque to display in their window for uh Obviously, they're 67 Buick. It's uh, the black is uh, all cut with a 132nd end mill, spray painted, and then sanded back down. It's just a piece of, uh, I think it's half by six poplar. Don't like cutting poplar. It's pretty stringy. This one, I was worried about it once it started cutting because I didn't know how much it was going to rip out, but it was able to uh, to be sanded and uh, cleaned up fairly well, and the relief yeah. cut turned out really good. All righty, I got a couple a couple more questions. I'm going to sneak in here. Mm -hmm. Echo Shark says, "Grant, do you have an online store?" Uh, sorry to say, not not currently. Uh, if you got something you like grant to, to make or whatever be sure and check out his facebook page um dragon cnc or dragonfly cnc my my bad uh and the link for that javi put it here in the chat earlier and it's also in the show description down below uh, also we got a question here from rick nolan he says on your plaques, Grant, do you make stands or hangers? Um, I had uh, on most of the plaques, they are there's a, a hook that's screwed into the back of them. I haven't got into the uh, dingbats of cutting uh, the keyhole slots and stuff yet. But then I just did uh, eight plaques for my wife for her coworkers, and she had. Uh, something sitting on her desk that sort of caught my eye the way it was sitting. And I got to looking at the back of it and it had a quarter inch dowel rod with a, just a, a recess hole drilled in the back of it. And the dowel rod was, I think two and a quarter or two and a half inches long drilled up a half of an inch from the bottom and centered. It just gives it a little bit of lean so they don't fall over. Uh, somebody bumps the desk or something. So that's, that's mainly how I'm doing them right now. 
Yeah. Once again, my buddy Javi's Johnny on the spot here. He's put uh, the link to uh, Grant's Facebook page, Dragonfly CNC, in the chat. So be sure and check it out and go give it a like. All right, I think I've only got one or two pictures left here. Let's see. Oh, oh yeah, there it is. It won't let me change pictures until I shrink it back down. Okay, here's another one. Huh? It's the more of the same. One of the uh, one of my coworkers. It's yeah. nice to walk through the office and see these all displayed on people's desks. I bet it is. I bet it is. So, and it's garnered other work too. So, uh, well, you know, that's one thing I talk about quite a bit on this show is, you know, sometimes people don't really have any intention of starting a little business or, or, you know, it's just strictly a hobby and all that. But once you start making stuff, and even though you might be giving it away to friends or coworkers or family or whoever, once, once other people see it, you know, they're going to say, well, where'd you get that? Well, will he make this for me? And the next thing you know, you kind of get into business, even though you don't really want to maybe yeah. it, uh, you know, once they find out you got a CNC machine, and it'll do stuff like this. It's, uh, it's not that hard to get, to get work. Yeah. Very well done on that. I like that. And I think that was the last, if I can find the thing here. Yeah, that was the last picture. All right. So um, I wanted to talk about, too, um, you know, we were we were giving you a ribbon a while ago about when you purchased purchased your machines and when they were actually running, but you didn't just, you didn't just uh, mess around and, and take the crates and throw them in the corner. You got busy doing something else, didn't you? Yeah. Um, I, I have the saw, I had the software um, for over a year before I even got the first 48 by 48. So, I was, as you know, I stated earlier, I travel quite a bit and I watch a lot of red or YouTube red videos. I've got, like I told Dave earlier, I've got three or 400 videos saved on my iPad and I spend a lot of time in airplane seats and hotels. And so I've got stuff designed and ready to cut if I can get the shop time to get them cut. So it keeps me busy. Um, Keeps me out of the bars when I'm on the road. So yeah. always something to do. Yeah. And I, and I think, you know, your studying and self teaching yourself uh, or YouTube video tutorials or however you're doing it with the, with the Vectric is really paying dividends because then when you did get your machine going, it's like there was no stopping you. You already, yeah. You already knew what was going on, and and uh, you didn't have to figure anything. You know, and of course, the machine's not that hard to figure out once you get it built. You know, it's more the software that kind of slows folks down. Mm -hmm. uh, they're like, okay, well, I got my machine built. Now, what do I make? How do I make? You know, how do I draw something? And you already had that down. So, um, kudos to you for. Uh, doing that because i I'm, I'm i'm one of those people i probably wouldn't have done that i would have waited <laughs> but uh but yeah you uh, you hit the ground running and i think all these photos um and i'm sure this is probably not all of the stuff you posted uh, this mm -hmm. is just the ones i saw on the on the dragonfly cnc facebook page so so uh so now that you've been into this CNC stuff for a little bit now, what, what are your thoughts? What, what would you tell somebody that's saying, man, Grant, that, that machine's cool. I like the stuff you're making. How do I, how do I get started in something like that? What would you, what would you say? Um, you, you can't be afraid of it. 
Um, you're going to break bits. You're, you're going to run into clamps that I've found out, you know, um, it's going to mill aluminum. If you've got aluminum clamps, sometimes whether you want it to or not, um, but you make mistakes, you learn from them and you move on. Um, bits are replaceable. So, yeah. Yeah. And I am so happy to hear you say what you just said, you know, you can't be afraid of it. Uh, cause I know a lot of people, uh, at first they may intimidated by the build, you know, especially, you know, more so a gat than a garage works, I guess, but, you know, you shouldn't be intimidated by any of it. As I, you guys have heard me say a million times, it's not rocket science. You know, if this guy can do it, anybody can do it. So, um, yeah, and, and you're going to break bits. I mean, that's how you learn when you mess up. Um, you know, there's probably not very many people uh, that, can say that all of their hold down clamps are pristine. <laughs> Never been touched. But I can guarantee you all of mine have got battle scars. Every single one of them. And some of them on both ends where I flipped them around. <laughs> but uh because I try to cut it close a lot of times. Sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. But that's why I use uh wooden plywood clamps and and all of my uh my aluminum ones, they're all scarred up, missing the little rubber tip on the end yeah. and all that, you know. And if you don't have clamps that look like that, you're not trying hard enough. That's all I can say. Well, I think, you know, talking about being scared of it, the, uh, the electronics was probably my biggest holdup. And I ended up with the Xylotex kit, uh, the plug and play. It, it still, you know... It, uh, I'm dreading the day that something goes wrong with it because I don't know what I'll get to replace it, but I'm sure I'll get it figured out. But I went a different path with mine when I had, and once I got it built and everything, I put some of my airline miles to good use and a good friend of mine, Michael Chipser, I flew him to Ohio for a weekend and uh, within a couple hours of him being here, we had it making chips. So I had, like I said, I had stuff already designed that I wanted to do. And he helped me with the breakout board and wiring in my emergency stops and stuff like that. I have no limit switches on mine, on my kit. Uh, so yeah, I bump things every once in a while, but just got to learn your limitations. Yeah. Um especially with the uh the small you, you know because you've got the smallest garage works mm -hmm. you don't really you don't really need limit switches on a smaller machine because it's not likely that the wires are going to get drug and cut or you know something mm -hmm. like that. they'll pretty much stay out of the way um anyway i used you know my old sidewinder is a 40 had a 40 by 26 cutting area and I never had anything fancy on there. I didn't use a touch plate. I didn't have an e-stop. I didn't have limit or homing switches. I didn't have drag chain. I didn't have any of that stuff. Uh, and it's still probably one of my favorite machines to run. I've still got it. Uh, it's disassembled right now because I had another one set up. But uh, as soon as that one's gone, I'll be putting that metal sidewinder back together. So, but... Uh, but yeah, you don't have to have something fancy. Now, when you put the bigger one together, you may want to uh, you may want to add some of the the bells and whistles. But it's just like anything else. I was always intimidated by that part. That's why when I started and I ran across the Xylotex kit, it was plug and play. And you know, I recommended that because I knew there were a lot of other people just like me who had strong mechanical skills as far as putting something together. But when it come to the electronics, I didn't know squat. So the electronics or, or the Xylotex plug and play rather, you know, really helped a lot of folks. But then once I decided, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get over this fear of 
you know, wiring and stuff like that. I'm going to figure it out. And I started doing it. Then I, it's like, once you do it, it's like, man, that, that's one near as hard as I thought it was, you know? So it's, it's really, it's really pretty easy. I mean, um, as long as you follow the directions, mm -hmm. it's, it's, you know, a little time consuming and I'm not a fan of having to solder stuff and all that, but, uh, but yeah, it's not, uh, it's not bad at all. Let me go through here and check and see. <coughs> On the comments we got here, see if I missed any questions. Um, I would, yeah, I do want to get bring something else up since we're talking about the Xylotex because I know we've got man, we've got a whole bunch of folks watching tonight. So let me find this right here. Uh, in case you didn't hear him say it the other day, I forget what uh, what live stream he was on the other day. But he was talking about uh, Javi is going to, well, let's just read his comment. He says, news to come in mid-February regarding a replacement for a Xylotec. Good news are coming. Um, okay, well, maybe he didn't want me to spill the beans here. But I think Javi is going to be uh, working on a plug-and-play type system to kind of fill that void that... Uh, that has been in place since Xylotech. They didn't go out of business, but they he just decided for some reason to uh, quit doing the plug and play kit. So, mm -hmm. but uh, okay, Javi says spill away, Dave. So I'm going to plug you. <laughs> there will be. He has assured me there will be a a plug and play kit available in the very near future. Um, and uh, once he gets one uh, put together and tested out, um, I will for sure have links available on the website for anybody who wants to go that route. Um, so there you go. Anybody that's sitting there tonight going, man, I'd really like to build one of these things, but I don't know the electronics. Um, before much longer, you won't have to worry about it. And even if you do try to do it, like I said, it's not uh, it's not near as intimidating once you do it the first time. Like I would, I wouldn't have any hesitation at all on doing, um, you know, wiring one up. I just don't like doing it because it's not my thing. Um, but anyway, let's see. Javi says, Javi Tech, for lack of a better name will likely be available as of Fe February 14th. So Becca says, awesome, much needed. Um, it says name brand. <laughs> yeah. uh, what's the cost? I don't know if he's got a, a, a hard, uh, a firm price as of yet, because it, it will depend on the components and how long it's going to take him to put these together and stuff like that. Uh, Everybody's volunteering to be a, a beta tester here. <laughs> so Troy says he'd be a test dummy. So, yeah. So uh, kudos to Javi for uh, taking it on. Uh, I'm glad he's uh, going to do that. Because I've been trying to get somebody to step up and do that. Because I'm thinking, you know, you might not be able to do it and, and sell them as cheap as Xylotech did. Uh, because I don't know, I don't really know how that guy made any money, and maybe that's why he's not doing it anymore. But uh, but uh, yeah, so you know, it's still there's still going to be people out there that would rather pay a little more, get it already plug and play, than have to do the work themselves. And uh, I'm one of those kind of people. I would rather get it myself. All right. Does anybody have any questions for Grant about any of the awesome uh, things we've shown tonight or just anything, anything in general? I'm going to scroll back through here. Um, I just want to plug something for Dave. If you haven't gone to his website, um, get in there, put yourself on the map. 
um, it's always nice to see where everybody's at and stuff. And like I said, maybe you, you wouldn't mind or whatever, but I might be coming to a state or a city near you and hit you up just for a handshake. And I've met, I think 11 or 12 people now off of, uh, the garage works and Gat and CNC pages and, uh, all great people. So I'm doing Dave's PR work out on the road. <laughs> He's doing it on the internet. I'm hitting the road for him. So. And I appreciate that. Yeah. You're uh, you're definitely a, uh, a big time traveler. Cause uh, I see the, the Facebook posts all the time and just that little airplane thing going back and forth all over the, the country. So, and sometimes Canada too. So yeah. uh, busy fellow you are. But I thank you for uh, putting the word out uh, about the uh, CNC machines. Um, let's see here. Steven wants to know, do you ever use magic markers or paint pens for color touch-up? I have used a Sharpie on some of the, uh, the black infill. Just when I don't want to go in the house, if it's cold out. I try and keep my paints in the basement where it's warm. But, yeah, yeah. Sharpies are amazing. Yeah, they uh, they work well, especially the black ones. When you when you you know when you're painting black and then you see one little spot where you didn't quite get enough paint, and it's a little sharpie. Nobody ever knows. No, nope. once it's got shellac on it, they can't tell the difference. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to go through here. Make sure I didn't miss anybody's questions. Uh, hobby is, uh, let me see, I might have missed something up here. Okay, yeah, let's put this on here. It says, still working on a price. Should come under a uh, $600 price point, limit switches, and all connections included. Uh, yeah, this, um, Hobby's talked to me a pretty good bit about this, and it's going to be really a, a big improvement uh on what the xylotex because the xylotex you know it it was uh you know would run the four steppers and that's pretty much it anything you wanted to add you had to add a breakout board and stuff and i, I think he's talking about uh including a breakout board and having everything already wired where you just plug in externally to the box correct me if i'm wrong now javi as i'm rattling off this stuff um but, you know, just to make it super easy. Um, so I think it'll be a, it, it's going to be not just a replacement for Xylotex. It will be way better than Xylotex, I'm sure. Can I get one before May 1st? <laughs> I don't know. You'll have to, uh, you'll have to work that out with, uh, with Hobby. Let's see. I saw another one I wanted to, uh, uh, let's see. Jared says, I will definitely buy one for when mine goes down. Got to have a backup and I'm lazy. Yep. Uh, it's always good to have a backup. Uh, let's see. Rick says, uh, you need to come visit. Uh, he's a Ohio State Buckeye fan, apparently. Rick's just, he's not very far from me. Um, okay. Yeah, maybe an hour or so. Uh, Mark Lindsay says, yeah, Grant, when are you coming back to Roseburg? I tried once, but you weren't in the state, but I know why you had to leave, but yeah, I'll get back out there one of these days. Okay. Let's see. I'm doing one last pass of the questions, folks. So if you got a question, we we're right at an hour, uh, here. Let's see. Let's see. Becca says she might get one for her new machine. Uh, let's see. Okay. I think we've got, I think we've got all of them, all of them covered here. Uh, once again, says they'll be on sale mid February if all goes as scheduled. Uh, all righty. Well, we're right at an hour here. I want to thank you, Grant, for taking the time to uh, come on the show tonight and share some of your awesome work. Um, it 
it's always a lot more fun to have a guest on here <laughs> so, I, so i don't have to do so much talking but uh thank you again for coming on and thank you to everybody man we've had a ton of folks watching tonight so thank you all so much for tuning in i appreciate every one of you thanks for having me dave uh, yeah, just got a, just a ton of folks. Uh, Bob, I had to get one more. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy, I enjoy the, uh, the friendly banter going back and forth between, between you and Bubba. So that's, it was uh, nice. To, I finally got down to meet Bubba a couple of weeks ago. It yeah. was, uh, it was yeah. nice to finally meet him. We, uh, yeah, well, you, really you were you were okay for a, you know for a a, a Yankee uh, Buckeye <laughs> loving <laughs> dude. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, alrighty, folks, we're going to get out of here. Uh, again, thank you, Grant, for tuning in. Thanks everybody that tuned in to watch tonight. Um, I appreciate you. And get out there in your shop, make some chips. And be watching for Javi's release of Javi Tech or whatever he's going to call it. So we'll see y'all. Good night, everybody. See Thanks you next again, week. Dave.